Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, but before I start off this list, I do want to start off by saying something a little bit different. I'm gonna gush a little. You, you the person watching this video, if you are a fan of this channel, thank you. Honestly, my friends and I wouldn't even have such a job if it wasn't for your support and each and every day I'm able to come to work here and pile on my discount brand of comedy for you and that just makes me so, so grateful. Thank you. But it actually leads me to the subject of today's Sermon on the Mount as time and time again passion, dedication and ridiculous hours spent tinkering with files by fans of video game franchises have made the impossible possible. And some of those go way beyond just like fixing bugs and the developers missed or adding in some sexy anime textures to Skyrim. I, 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 but, but my god, I salute you for that. Instead, the entries on this list are almost groundbreaking examples of going above and beyond for the games you love. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 amazing video game moments created by fans. Number 10. Just Cause 2's Online Multiplayer when Just Cause 2 came out, and after the dust had settled from the countless buildings that had been turned to rubble, fans of the game turned to each other and lamented how the experience would be perfect for multiplayer mayhem. However, it seemed that Avalanche Studios had no interest in this idea. Well, that plus it would have been ludicrously complex to pull off. But that's exactly what two modders, Jax M and Trix, decided to do. Converting the once single player sandbox into a plaything for all people to enjoy. This mod allows literally thousands of players to run around the same version of Panau Island, spawning items and causing chaos. Was it rough around the edges? My god, yes, but it proved popular enough that Avalanche later endorsed it as an official add on for the game, even putting the base game on sale to draw attention to the mod and introducing achievement support. The mod was officially released in late 2013, and given that the developer had yet to create multiplayer modes for any subsequent Just Cause games, it remains a landmark case of players taking matters into their own hands. Number 9. Mario Kart's 200cc Class Mario Kart 8 was the first game in the hit racing series to introduce the ultra-fast, insanely punishing 200cc racing class, but it wasn't so quick to get this feature included as some fans would have liked. The update came some time after the game's release and was met with huge positive response from fans. Now There were some issues created from the higher speeds, but these were patched out in the Switch version of the game. But why was it such a big deal? Well, the modding community had been adding in these ever-escalating speed classes ever since it was possible. In fact, so prevalent was it that many hardcore fans of Mario Kart 7 claimed the user-generated speed mode was the only way to play this game. Thankfully, Nintendo appreciated the demand for this mode and included it, making all of those technically illegal street races now so much more accessible. Number 8. Sonic Mania redeems the franchise It is fair to say that Sonic as a franchise has had a pretty rough go of it over the last few years, but despite the character's obvious popularity, Sega's output has been wildly inconsistent, with numerous brand damaging releases killing the general public's enthusiasm for the series. But then, in 2017, Sonic Mania came along and reminded everyone why they loved Sonic in the first place. The frantic pace, the charmingly timeless art style, and yes, the occasional savage difficulty spike. But what really put the egg on the face of Team Sonic was the fact that it wasn't even made by them, and was instead a creation of Sonic modder Christian Whitehead, who had previously been employed by Sega to develop enhanced mobile ports of earlier Sonic games. Whitehead made a name for himself by creating his own proprietary Sonic engine the Retro Engine, which he used to develop the aforementioned ports and present a Sonic Mania prototype to Sonic's lead producer, who authorised him to develop an official franchise title. The result, of course, was the best-reviewed Sonic game in 25 years, with many deeming it to be the best entry into the franchise ever. Number 7. Diablo 2's Secret Cow Level Now, Technically speaking, Diablo 2's infamous Secret Cow Level was developed entirely by the fine folk at Blizzard, but it would have never have come to pass had fans not first dispersed the myth that the original Diablo indeed featured said cow level. The urban legend dictated that players could click on the corpse of a cow and be transported to a special land filled with animals, a prospect so ridiculous that it quickly took on a life of its own with fans, and even though it absolutely wasn't even one bit true. 
But you know what? This is the type of myth that spreads. Despite people knowing deep down that there's nothing of worth to it, and things weren't helped by Blizzard who teased fans about the non-existence, even going so far as to publish a photo of the secret cow level on April Fool's Day 1999. Yet when Diablo 2 hit stores the next year, it turned out not to be a prank at all. The secret cow level allowed players to battle hordes of hell bovines and even a cow boss called the Cow King. Nice. And it would never have come about without the passion and mass frustration of Blizzard's fans. Number 6. Fallout New Vegas's Hardcore Mode Now This might sound harsh, but it is kind of true when you say that Bethesda is no stranger to relying on players to do some of the heavy lifting for them. Practically every single game they publish has performance-boosting fixes released by fans long before any official patches come out. Plus, the amount of content that they add into the game for them for free is ridiculous. For instance, modders introduced weapon modifications to Fallout 3, so Obsidian was smart enough to include them in Fallout New Vegas. While Fallout 4's base building mechanics were clearly inspired by similar mods for both Fallout 3 and New Vegas. But the most significant adoption of fans' input was unquestionably the addition of Hardcore Mode in New Vegas, where stim packs only heal players over time, players have to make considerations for dehydration and sleep deprivation, ammunition has weight, and recruited companions have permadeath. It was utterly brilliant. Taking its cues from the likes of the Wanderers Edition mod of Fallout 3, the hardcore mode was a huge hit with fans in Fallout New Vegas, which makes it an even weirder situation when Bethesda watered it back down for Fallout 4. Of course, fans soon fixed that little issue for them once again. Number 5. Street Fighter X Mega Man Street Fighter Cross Mega Man was an event that, much like your mum when I'm wheelbarrowing her without hands, had a lot of excitement behind it. We may have finished last at the Sports Day event, but I finished first, if you know what I'm saying. And yes, that is my one per list. Yet this entire project started out as just one developer and a ton of passion. Xiao Zong Hui. Hui was eventually able to present a prototype to a Capcom VP, who not only endorsed the project, but even had signed members of Capcom's own dev teams to help work on QA testing and marketing. Better yet, when the game was finally released in late 2012, it was completely free. Though fans and critics did note an overall lack of polish, it was largely praised as a well-realized fan project, and something that Capcom should have sorted because of their own refusal to do anything of substance with the Blue Bomber at this point in time. Plus, a patch that was released a few months later fixed most of the initial teething problems. It is an amazing achievement that managed to amass over 1 million downloads over three months. Fair play. Number 4. Far Cry's Tent Glitch Fix Believe it or not, the original Far Cry was released way back in 2004. God, how time flies. I am so very, very old. In a rather strange moment, though, Crytek's final patch for the game, which came out in 2006, actually introduced a pretty infuriating bug. Enemy combatants were now able to see through tents and shoot players trying to hide behind them. Naturally, this proved massively frustrating to fans, yet because Crytek had moved on to developing Crisis, the complaints largely fell upon deaf ears. It was left to modders then to patch the issue themselves, with fan far out creating his own hotfix which remedied the improper AI response. But here's where it gets interesting. It wasn't until literally this year that the fix was incorporated into an official version of the game, with the GOG release finally including, per their patch notes, a small fix to prevent AI bots from shooting through tents. Thanks to Far Out for reaching out to us. All that time waiting, and now we can officially go camping behind some tents. Oh, what a clever play on words that was. Number 3. The Birth of the MOBA Genre When you look at the gaming landscape today, the likes of League of Legends and Dota 2 prove how much staying power the MOBA genre has got. However, it's mad to think that this entire branch of gaming actually started out as a fan-created series of mods which the industry quickly took notice of. StarCraft's custom map Aeon of Strife is widely credited with laying the framework that would become the MOBA game and was expanded upon by the Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos custom map Defense of the Asians. Dota, which was released by Carl Summer back in 2002. By 2005, professional Dota tournaments were taking place. In the late 2000s, Valve took control of the IP, hiring lead designer Icefrog to create the absurdly successful 2013 sequel, Dota 2. League of Legends was, of course, released in the interim, and at its peak in 2014 enjoyed a mind-boggling 27 million daily players. From basement tinkering to big league salting, this is truly one of the most rapid ascensions in the industry. 
Number 2. Hitman's Silent Assassin Suit Only Challenge When players get good enough at a game to the point that it becomes boring, the next step is to play said game with self-imposed challenges and restrictions. After all, we won't be contained by the petty limitations of the game itself, haha I say. This is certainly the case here, where after mastering all of the mechanics required to sneak and snuff in the original Hitman games, players designed the Silent Assassin run, which required killing only targets, having no bodies be discovered, avoiding being spotted, and erasing video evidence of your presence. Then the step up from this came, which was the No Disguises limitation. Naturally, this ramps the difficulty up to ludicrous levels, requiring unfathomable pinpoint precision from players, yet proved so popular with fans that IO Interactive actually made Silent Assassin suit only as an in-game challenge starting in the 2016's Hitman. And number one, the creation of Team Fortress and Counter-Strike. And finally, we have a double whammy with two of the most influential first-person shooters of all time, both of which were originally modified from existing classic games. First up, we have Team Fortress, which started out life as a 1996 Quake mod before Valve hired the designers to port it to Half-Life's Gold Source engine in 1999, whereby it became a veritable online multiplayer phenomenon. In 2007, a long gestating sequel was finally released to massive critical and fan acclaim, and has continued to be iterated upon ever since its free-to-play form. On the other hand, there's Counter-Strike, which has a remarkably similar origin story, beginning life as a Half-Life mod which was eventually acquired by Valve in 2000, along with developers Gooseman and Cliff. In its various iterations, Counter-Strike has been a popular FPS mainstay ever since, and late last year transitioned into a free-to-play model. But neither game would exist without the tireless work of devoted fans first and foremost. So to them and so many others, we raise our Mountain Dew, our half-opened crisp packets, and hell, even a can of Relentless if we're feeling classly, and say to them all, thank you. And there we go, those were 10 amazing video game moments created by fans. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, but before you go, whatever you're getting up to today, I hope that you absolutely smash it because you deserve love, happiness, and support. And do you know why? Because you're bloody awesome. As always, I've been Jules, you have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.